Yeah, I got you. I got you. So, um, let's talk about today, man. Um, what do you see different around the neighborhood that wasn't here when you left? Well, you know, I'm I'm gonna keep it one hundred. Earlier, cats who who did who couldn't find their way and was caught up and and got caught up in the street life and the only way they could make money was with the dope. That's not available anymore for the youngsters. The dope ain't available. And it's fucked up. That's the worst thing ever happened to the community. It, it took a bunch of people down. People I respected. Women I used to look at when I was a kid and had a crush on them. Next time I know she's smoking dope small, souls everywhere, geeked out. And I'm like, damn, and, and, and it hurts you. To see how it's happening, it's happening all around you. And that was a bad thing, but nevertheless, it provided a lot of money for a bunch of people. A bunch of people became rich or doing, even if they rich, they are, they okay right now just because of that epidemic. But if you look at the numbers, yeah, that's a few that made it. But thousands of th hundreds of thousands that didn't and got crushed behind it, so it didn't make sense. If it don't make dollars, don't make sense, the math ain't there. Yeah. You know, so with that being said, that overall epidemic was a bad man. Yeah. It was a bad man. But with me, I see the community still fighting, but to a degree declining. Because like I said, when I go back to the youngsters, they didn't have that avenue. So they robbed it a lot. They harm people because that's not there. And for them. Gotcha, gotcha. So, you know, they're going to go take something and it's making it bad when on the news, this and that, because they frustrated and, and it ain't nothing, no smooth way to get it. If it was available to them a smoother way, they would get it. Yeah. But it, it's not available to them anymore. That was just, a, that season gone. Gotcha. So you see another violent tendencies come out now and it's prevailing. It's not just even here in Fifth Ward, it's citywide. This shit is countrywide, actually. You know, so it's nationwide. It's, it's not just sent it to here, but this is what I see because this is where I'm at. So I see it here, but I know it's all over. Yeah, it is. All over the city, man. Robin is the new wave. Uh, uh, you know, it's the new way to get a quick dollar. And whether, you know, whatever, we ain't gonna get too much into what they do, but, you know, just all types of illegal theft and stuff like that. So um, I noticed, you know, we t we see this around the city. Have they ever started or began trying to gentrify parts of Fifth Ward? Of course. And I was about to lead to that when I was talking about that. That's it's happening here in my neighborhood. I don't like it. You got to fight the taxes even here, so they bringing them lofts in and. And, and you know, moving the people out of this community, and this is a historical co community you you have right here. So it, it is a sour, sour point because it's happening all over the city and it's just one of the wards surrounded downtown that they coming in because they coming in, everybody can't get downtown. So of course they're gonna get adjacent to the downtown and they buy these cheap lots, families fighting and don't care about it no more. Or they done lost it behind taxes because want nobody to pay the taxes and they building these laws. I mean, them motherfuckers, you can, you can do this here and touch one from the next one. Easy. Yeah. They squeezing them in because it's, it's a money rush. They're building it up instead of out. Yeah. Being, Houston being a, a city where we're used to yards or just having more space on a lot as opposed to being jammed up, raising high in the sky. So with the money run going on, you you saying it like okay now they actually begin to just keep playing with the taxes. Yeah, because as you build them these townhouses out here and then you jack the price up, it's going for three twenty five, three seventy five, you know, three hundred and seventy five thousand. Put that out there. And then you have other houses across the street here, whatever, twenty five they was worth probably twenty five thousand. They're gonna jack their taxes up and say their house is worth more. But it's not. And therefore, they have to pay higher taxes. And if they can't afford the taxes, they default and lose their property and their home because they can't have the taxes. So as they build these, the taxes started going up 
and it pushed the people who been here out. All for accommodating what's hip and what's fashionable right now coming in because you have a lot of transplants from other states, other cities. They used to live in cram and this and that. So to a degree that they do a disgrace to the city used because they're killing part of our core and our identity, chasing behind what other people are doing. Other cities, I should say. Right. Well, that's pretty much it, man. Um, talk to the people about the, your novel and stuff again and uh, you know, anything, anything else you want to add? No, you know, my novel will be coming. I'll be back on here when it's ready. I'll be back on here to give y'all all the details until now, you know, I'll keep it close to the cuff. And uh, when it's ready, you'll know me. And I'm bring my boy with me, my best friend. It's another part of the story that y'all didn't hear. It's gonna blow your mind. Yeah, good, man. So we go, whenever we get back, whenever you get back on the poetry nights and the, the novel and everything like that, we'll be for sure to uh, reach out to it and promote it. I'm coming to y'all first. Well, all right, man. Appreciate you, Galen, giving us the words, man. It's Urban Politicians, uh, the podcast, the drop, the vlog. We got more interviews coming. Y'all search and click and subscribe to us. We appreciate the support we getting, man. And, um, yeah, we'll be back with Galen again.